Hi guys, this is the PR and I'm Joanna H. So welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, if you're new to my channel, welcome and I hope that you will like this video and also push the subscribe button because I would love you to join our community. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna be touching very briefly on what not to eat for your skin. And I feel like this video is kind of like universal. Um, it doesn't even really matter whether you suffer with eczema or not because these foods are gonna have a detrimental effect on not just your skin but your overall health in general so I feel like this video would be helpful to anybody really um, so if you watched the video last week we went through kind of like what foods to eat to encourage your skin to heal and as I said in this video we're going to touch what not to eat so I'm going to be a little bit cheeky and I'm going to give you guys a little plug that right here which is um, page 11 of my ebook there's a whole page on there about what foods to eat and not to eat um, and it really goes into detail um, about the foods that you should be eating and why you should be eating them but I'm going to give you guys the down low on this video anyway so don't worry but I mean if you want all the information in one go then definitely the ebook is is one to get I'll put the link up there but basically um, as I said before last week everything that you eat has an impact on your body whether it's for good or for bad everything that you put into your body everything you consume um, is going to have an effect so if you're trying to heal your skin or you want better health or you're trying to look after your body in any way shape or form you have to really start to think consciously about what you're actually eating one of the things that we spoke about last week about was about meat and I did say that me personally um, even though I'd gone on a vegan diet for about a year or just under a year um, for me what's comfortable for me and what I prefer to do is I eat salmon, wild salmon weekly, and I eat meat every so often. So on a normal day-to-day -day basis, Joanna eats a whole food plant-based diet. Um, once a week, at least once a week, I have wild salmon, and every once in a while, I will have um, red meat. Very rarely, I will have chicken. I just mean chicken or a bit. Anyway, one thing that I do not touch in my diet and refuse to touch in my diet from this point on, to the day I die, <laughs> is pork. And the reason why I, I tell people to stay away from pork and not to eat pork is because pork is like the dirtiest animal that you could possibly consume um, in regards to what the pork, what the animal eats, the way it, um, it carries itself, the way it kind of like um, cleans itself. They're just so, um, I wanted to say animalistic. I don't even know how to explain it. Like they just don't, they will just eat anything. They will eat literally anything. You could put it's even its own babies in front of it and they would probably eat that too. Like they just don't have any like real restrictions on to what, to what they allow. Also the other reason why pork is very detrimental is because the way their body system works, they like all of their parasites and all of their um, their toxins stay inside their body. Like they don't have the same mechanisms that we do in terms of like sweating and detoxification. It's like everything that they that is going on in their body kind of stays within it. And like I said last week, whatever your animal eats, whatever your animal has in terms of sickness, illness, disease, is essentially what you're putting into your own body. And bearing in mind that pigs have got loads of parasites, worms, all of these other things, you don't even have a clue what exactly you are eating when you consume the animal. So I guess this is one of the reasons why people decide to go vegan in the first place. But as I said, it's about choice and it's about um, knowing what's right for you, your choices, your body, etc. I'm not going to judge anybody for what they choose to do. But one thing I would say is that if you're trying to heal your skin and heal your overall, overall health, pork is a meat that you should definitely stay away from. So the next thing that you guys need to avoid in your diet is gluten. So again, this is, again, it goes back to kind of like bio-individuality in terms of what you can tolerate because some people can tolerate gluten and I do know people that have healed their skin still eating a gluten kind of diet. The main thing that I would say to stay away from is number one, gluten. And for me, I think gluten keep out of your diet for a good amount of time. Apparently gluten takes about six months to completely like go through your body and completely expel from your body. So if you want to find out if you're gluten sensitive or gluten gluten intolerant because they're two different things um, you have to keep gluten out of your diet for a considerable period of time and then add it back in a small amounts and see how you do with it but one thing that I can say is um, one thing that I can definitely say to keep out of your diet for good if you're someone who suffers with skin 
um, disease, eczema, etc., is wheat. Because wheat is like the most hybridized substance on planet Earth. It's been genetically modified over and over and over again. All the things that you would normally have in, a, in an agricultural setting, wheat has been hybridized to withstand all of that. So by the time it gets to your plate and you digest it, that thing does not even digest in your body properly. It causes so much havoc. So wheat is something that I personally will not eat. I, I will not allow it in my diet. Like even if you buy um, organic wheat, I still feel like there's tr there's there's an element of like GMO or hybridization because it's been happening over such a long period of time. Um, I would say if you are trying to add gluten back into your diet and you want to see how gluten works with your body, um, instead of using wheat or like conventional wheat that you would find in the shop, try spelt because spelt is an ancient grain that hasn't been hybridized, that hasn't been tampered with and um, it's still in its kind of like natural form and again you can buy organic spelt and you can see how you go with that because as I said there are loads of people I know that have eczema or have had eczema that eat spelt and they don't have any issues at all. So um, the second one is gluten, but again, depending on your bio individuality and what you can actually tolerate, you can kind of take it out, add it back in later on, and see how you go. But definitely, definitely, definitely stay completely away from wheat. Like there are so many different alternatives that you can use to bake, to make cakes, um, to make pancakes, whatever you use flour for, um, to make bread. There's so many different alternatives now, so definitely just stay away from wheat. Um, the next thing that you guys need to stay away from is dairy. Now, dairy is like one of the most inflammatory foods. Like, I don't think there's anything actually wrong with dairy per se, because um, I would personally try drinking like raw cow's milk or, and in the past, just, just recently at Christmas time, I bought um, raw cheese from Waitrose and I made a mac and cheese because I was craving like nobody's business like anyone that knows me knows that Joanna's recipe Joanna's dish is mac and cheese like honestly it, it's it has a special place in my heart and I was craving it and I was like how am I gonna have this mac and cheese like I've done a, um, a vegan mac and cheese on my channel which tastes amazing but it's just not the same it's really not just it's just not the same and I just wanted cheese so I bought raw cheese um, and I made um, a mac and cheese with ghee which is um, organic like like um, raw butter and um, also with raw cheese and my mac and cheese came out banging and I didn't have any effect on my skin but don't get excited because even with that I, I don't I, I don't I just don't touch dairy simply because like I said it's an inflammatory food it causes so much um, inflammation in the body especially if you're not well so if you're already dealing with a skin condition or a skin disease or skin ailments adding dairy to the mix is not going to help you it's only going to hinder your process again a lot of these things I might talk about in this video some of them are things that you can try adding back at a later date maybe in a different way or different form as I said um, if you're better not now if you're not well just forget dairy altogether but if you're better and your skin's better try raw milk try ghee try raw um, cheese cheese and see how it goes because it's not necessarily for me it's not necessarily the dairy that causes the issues it's the process that the dairy goes through it's the um it's the um what you call it it's all the processes that it goes through the ultra heat treatment um the homogenization all this ozization all of that stuff basically they say cleans the milk before they put it in the bottle it actually changes like the dna so to speak or the makeup of the actual dairy itself so by the time it gets into your body your system doesn't even really recognize it because it's gone through so many chemical changes that are kind of like unnatural so it just causes inflammation your body doesn't know what it is so i would say go back to dairy in its rawest form but if you're trying to heal your skin and you are unwell definitely stay away from dairy so another thing that um i always advise people to kind of stay away from is corn and the reason why again it's kind of similar to a lot of the things on the list it's just been overly hybridized it's been it's over it's been over processed it's been genetically modified over and over again um monsanto owned probably most of it in general in like the world population whatever whatever in the globe and um it's just it doesn't digest properly in your system like how many of us know that when you eat usually when you eat a, a cob of corn or any sort of corn that thing comes straight back out and looks exactly the same as when you ate it your body doesn't have any use for it and again it can cause a lot of inflammation in the body it causes because it doesn't break down and your body can't actually digest um, the corn itself it just it's almost like scratching and a lot of like pulling a, a, along your um, 
I was about to say your umbilical cord. <laughs> Along your um, digestive tract, it's just very, it's just, it's just, just, yeah, it's just not necessary. So I would say stay away from corn, but again, similar to the other things, if you do want to eat corn, organic corn should be okay, but while you're healing, it's probably something to avoid. See, I mentioned pork, about pork being like a really dirty, filthy animal, and I know that some people are going to watch this and be like, yeah, but Joanna, you're a Christian, remember what the Bible says in the New Testament, God called everything clean so we can eat everything. I mean, I'm not going to go deep, deep, deep into theology because this is not what the video is about. But honestly, I believe that there was more to what the word was saying in regards to the meat being clean. I think it was more kind of like a kind of like just letting people know like that God's God's standard for righteousness was changing through the coming of Jesus Christ. That no longer did you have to follow like a set of rules, rules, rules to be made righteous, but that Christ alone, Christ's death alone, Christ's blood alone made us righteous. And it was to kind of like ease the Jews at the time, the followers of Christ at the time, to allow the Gentiles in. I don't think there's anything wrong with eating pork from a biblical standpoint, but at the same time, I think it was to be able to like amalgamate the two cultures and there not being like any sort of like division or war between what people were eating and etc etc. It was just to it was just supposed to kind of create a smooth transition of the gospel from Jews to Gentiles. That is it. It didn't change the quality of the meat. Do you understand what I'm saying? It doesn't change the animal, it doesn't change the animal's behavior it doesn't change what it eats and another thing that the bible spoke about in the very beginning in the old testament about things that we shouldn't eat it was pork and shrimps and kind of like crustacean type animals that live at the bottom of the ocean because their job is to sweep up the debris and the dirt and the the gunk that comes out of all the other animals and they just eat all of that and it's just disgusting it's foul and as i said like if you're trying to heal your skin a lot of these um these meats pork shrimp um prawns all of those crustacean type animals they're generally in themselves very toxic so if you're eating these foods and you're trying to process them you're on top of your own toxicity trying to process the toxicity that, that you got from them so it's just a very counterproductive as i said this isn't a rule book this isn't a kind of like this is what you have to do so what whatever joanna says all of this stuff is up to you, choice, but this is what I would recommend if you're trying to heal your skin. To stay away from pork, shrimp, prawns, crabs, lobsters, all of that crustacean jazz. Just yeah. So on to oils. Um, oils that I would stay away from. So again, we spoke last week about kind of like me at, at the beginning, staying completely away from fats and thinking, oh, all, all, all oils are bad. They're gonna make my blood thick. I'm not gonna be able to, you know, detoxify properly. Yeah. I'm a bit more educated now, but there are, there are oils that you do need to stay away from and I think I mentioned it last week I think I mentioned rapeseed oil as being one of the most dangerous oils to consume Rapeseed oil um, is actually kind of like, oh, I don't know, you could almost call it a poison, like it's that bad Like it has such a bad reputation, it had such a bad reputation when it was called canola oil And canola oil got such a bad reputation for how it processed in the body and how it broke down the body's um, internal organs and really messed up the, the body's digestion that it had to be rebranded to rapeseed oil so people would buy it again but it's like the cheapest oil that you can find like on planet earth and that's why people use it so much like literally rapeseed oil is cheap and all the restaurants use it all like these fast food restaurants use it in abundance because it's terrible and it's cheap even like um like vegan or like clean brands use rapeseed oil like i love leon like leon the restaurant and i love some of the food that they make but they cook everything in rapeseed oil as well and there's there are loads of other like vegan type brands that use rapeseed oils in their products like me i'm extra like i'm fully extra i've emailed all of these brands and been like look you're supposed to be healthy you're supposed to be holistic da -da 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 -da. you know that rapeseed oil is not the best oil to use why don't you use avocado oil why don't you use coconut oil and they always come back and give me the same old you know cock and bull story about it being accessible okay that's fine i just don't buy it but rapeseed oil is an, again another oil that you want to keep out of your diet your liver and um your your in your internal organs are so important to detoxifying your body and again you don't want to be adding anything that can make that job harder for them and rapeseed oil is not the oil to use so 
that's the main one stay away from rapeseed oil then you've got vegetable oils on the other hand and the reason why i say also to stay away from vegetable oils is because canola or rapeseed quote unquote is a vegetable so usually what they do is they will create a rapeseed oil and they would call it vegetable oil and you'll think oh it's a vegetable so it's healthy it's all marketing it's all marketing usually if you look on the back it's like rapeseed oil like there's sometimes when i'm not going to name any names go to a family member's house because i look at everything and i'll look at like the ingredients on on say like some of their oils and it will say vegetable oil on the front and then when you read the back it will say something like oh genetically modified um I don't know sunflower oil genetically modified olive oil added with rapeseed oil and it's all of this madness like if it says vegetable just forget it if it says rapeseed oil forget it sunflower oil is also one that i would also avoid because again it sounds like you know sunflower oil that's amazing but it's just it's very inflammatory inside of your body now i think like sunflower oil is a bit harder to kind of like avoid because again sunflower oil is commercial but these are just things that you know to avoid in your own personal cooking so we spoke about it last week um oils i would recommend that you have in abundance because they're good oils they're high in omega freeze um they're very easy for the body to use and consume and they're actually very heat healing in themselves because of the nutrients and minerals, olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil and grapeseed. Those are the four oils that I would definitely recommend. But stay away from rapeseed, vegetable oil and sunflower oil. So the next thing is um, processed sugar um, and sweeteners and um, artificial colours, artificial flavourings etc etc because kind of similar to like perfumes in beauty or like fragrance in beauty those words can cover like a whole array of ingredients that they don't need to disclose an artificial colour could be anything an artificial flavour could be anything they don't have to really disclose what that is and you I mean I don't want to put anything in my body that I don't know what it is it could be anything and again like in regards to like sweeteners like sucralose and um there's one that begins with a like, as, 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 aspartame they are so chemically dangerous to the body like when i see people giving my kids like things like robinson's shoot fruit fruit shoot or whatever my heart skips a beat like it's almost inhumane and almost criminal the fact that they know that these chemicals that they lace in in foods especially in children's foods are so harmful but they sell it anyway and they market to you like oh yeah um 30 percent less sugar but we'll put like a spark a spark to me in it for like 50 percent stay away from all of those things again it's it's really just to avoid the level of toxicity in your body and like alleviating the stress that's already on your liver on your gut on your on your digestive system and allowing your body to really detoxify whilst you're detoxifying you don't want to add anything that will just inflame the situation like some of these foods i'm talking about take a really long time to process out of the body so if you're trying to heal your skin and you're constantly adding these little toxic ingredients in you're kind of like going back and forward back and forward and that healing will never really come um so i'm gonna try and make it quicker now so the next thing is eggs again i'm not gonna go into deep 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 discussion about this but um eggs are again i personally think they're an inflammatory food in some way shape or form and it also breeds or feeds some bacteria in the body so we, we we don't live in like a society where you can go to the gp and you could be like oh do i have this bacteria do i have this bacteria they're not going to check for any of that and some of the bacteria that um feed eczema and feed skin disease um feed and thrive on eggs and one of the reasons why i decided to take eggs completely out of my diet was because number one i don't know what bacteria i have going on inside of my gut and i didn't want to add anything that could potentially feed anything that i don't even know is there and number two in the beginning of my healing journey i remember i've never really eaten eggs anyway i only eat eggs and like cakes and bakes because i can't taste egg but generally i i've never liked eggs from when i was a child but because um, I was trying to go on this whole holistic healing journey, I was like, I'm going to eat anything that's good for me just so I can get my skin better. And I started eating eggs and then those pictures that I put up of my chest literally black and covered in eczema was when I started eating eggs. And again, I know that there was a lot of detoxification going on because I was eating better. But as far as I was concerned, I was like, listen, I don't know what was going on there, but it's just mad how when I started adding eggs into my diet, my skin went crazy. So those eggs went straight back out and I'm not adding them back in again. But yeah, like I said in the beginning of the video, if there's anything that I mentioned in this video, like, no, but I think eggs are really this, they're that, that, cool, fine. 
wait till your skin heals and then add back like eggs back in slowly and see how your skin responds and if it responds crazy then you know okay eggs is a bit of an, a trigger for me and if you're fine then stick with your eggs so the next thing is farmed fish so um in earlier one of the video i spoke about me eating wild fish every week or trying to, yeah i eat wild fish every week and the reason why i say stay away from farm fish is similar so it's basically the same reason why i say stay away from like farmed animals so to speak animals that aren't reared like organically because farm fish is basically like them farming fish literally so they'll have like a massive pool loads of fish in it breeding loads of bacteria but it's not in a nat it's not it's not in its natural habitat it's kind of like they're fed extra foods and extra ingredients to make them bigger plumper fatter um they put antiseptic antibiotics all of this stuff in the pool to like limit the um exposure to um disease and illness and as i said all of the these toxins are floating in this water that these fishes are farmed in or these fish are farmed in just ends up on your plate so if you're buying fish and you buy it wild it means that it's been fished out of the ocean now don't get me wrong like there's also toxicity in the ocean but i mean if it's wild fish alaskan fish you're likely to have very clean fish so just stick to wild fish um so the last two things conventional grains which we kind of spoke about earlier as well in regards to like wheat and um gluten but just conventional grains again corn those are conventional grains um white rice is a conventional grain conventional meaning like it's just it's mainstream it's widespread everybody kind of knows it eats it um one of the things that i tell people all the time all the time all the time um is that conventional grains are so processed it's like our body finds it sometimes can find it really difficult to process all of these all of these like kind of like hybridized grains and I've always found that when I have a flare up or my skin's not doing too well, if I cut out grains for a period of time, um, which I usually do for about a month, my skin just almost heals overnight. So the grains that I stay, I try my best to stay away from. I haven't been doing so well recently because of um, financial limitations or lockdown limitations. I eat what I can get and if the kids eat rice then I might just eat rice. But I try and stay away from white rice. And if I do have brown rice, um, you guys might have seen it on my Instagram or my Instagram stories. I usually soak my brown rice from the night before. I soak the brown rice um, in water with a little bit of either lime, lemon or um, apple cider vinegar. So the vinegar, the acidic pH in the water now breaks down the, um, the outer layer of the rice which makes it more digestible so by the time you come to cooking it you actually need less water because it's it's more um digestible it's more like absorbable and um it breaks down in your body easier you're able to digest it better so if you're going to buy a grain um i would always suggest that you buy brown rice um or black rice and make sure you soak it before you cook it so it makes it more digestible do this the same thing with like other grains that you use you eat as well like bean i mean like quinoa etc etc but also with beans um because again it makes it more digestible and you can also buy um sprouted grains so grains are already sprouted the only reason why i wouldn't really um suggest going with, with a sprouted grains because it's actually really really expensive um but you can sprout your grains at home you can just do a quick google show how do i sprout rice and you can do it it's not that difficult but conventional grains as a whole again it's very hybridized very over processed a lot of the nutrients that you need from those grains have been removed and it becomes kind of like futile to eat it so if I was going to recommend a grain to you, it would be wild rice. Wild rice is like one of the most nutritious rices you can have. Um, it's very bioavailable. Um, again, soaking it before cooking it makes it even better to digest. And it has so many minerals and nutrients in it. It's unbelievable. But again, because of like um, financial limitations, not everybody can eat wild rice. I don't eat wild rice all the time. But as I said, you can have brown rice. Make sure you soak it first, sprout it first. So it's better for your body than just having it like straight out. Of the and the last one is alcohol alcohol now i mean it's kind of obvious why you shouldn't be drinking alcohol because um your liver is like your main detoxification um organ in your body and usually when you have eczema it means that your liver is um blocked and is unable to detoxify as effectively as it should be able to so having like um things like alcohol and like high amounts of caffeine really overburden the liver even more than it already is and all of that toxicity will just end up back inside of your body now um 
yeah i think it's it's really that simple like if you like i said before if you want your skin to heal and you want your skin to heal quickly the aim is to take out as many inflammatory foods as possible as many trigger foods as possible for a period of time and if possible add some of these things back in see how you do um see how your skin does but there are definitely some things i would keep completely out of my diet for good so like i said the wheat the pork the shrimp the crustacean type animals yeah and i think alcohol is definitely one especially if you're an excessive drinker now there are loads of different parts in the world where you might have a glass of wine with your meals because again like red wine has a lot of like health benefits as well if you have red wine a little glass of wet red wine with a meal i don't see it being a major issue it has a lot of health benefits to it but again i feel like you just need to weigh up the kind of like the pros and cons of okay how much health benefits can i get from a glass of wine and how much is it going to affect my skin especially if you already have a skin issue so I would definitely say if you're trying to heal your skin things that are like obvious toxins like alcohol is an obvious toxin we know it's toxic because when you drink loads of it you're drunk when you're on the floor um, so just keep that out of your diet and also cigarettes too I know it's not food but if you're trying to heal your skin you shouldn't be smoking that's a freebie right there um, but yeah you just want to try your best to um, provide your body with loads of foods minerals nutrients that will really help your body to um, regenerate and be able to detoxify properly and you just want to keep out as many things as possible that could kind of like make you digress make you regress and as I said there's so many things especially now like that people are kind of like on, on a more like holistic like path i mean years ago some of this stuff was unheard of but now like people are more conscious of what they eat they're more conscious of their fitness people are going to the gym people are running and it's such a good thing because loads of brands have been birthed out of this kind of like this new health consciousness um, and then loads of alternatives that you can eat that are really really good and before i go actually i almost forgot one thing that you should not eat on a on a diet where you're trying to heal eczema or skin disease and that is franken vegan foods so franken vegan foods meaning things like seitan spelled s-e-i-t-a-n um because it's like wheat it's like wheat gluten basically made into meat and things like that like um impossible burgers i think it's called that like all of these plant-based fake burgers fake meat burgers fake chicken fake bacon all of this stuff in the shop it's so much worse than the actual meat that they're telling you to avoid and again it's all marketing like if you read the ingredients on some of this stuff like corn um like i said these impossible burgers burgers that bleed like real meat like some of these chemicals in there are insane like honestly it's almost like a mockery that they're trying to encourage people to go vegan and to eat well our vegan is this and that but the vegan franken foods that they put on the shelves are insane and even worse than the meat they're telling you to avoid so if you're trying to heal your skin and you want to go on a plant-based kind of diet and you want to eat vegan whatever you decide to do don't turn from um, a standard American diet as we call it like the donuts, the crisps, the, the fizzy drinks and all of that rubbish that you try and that you want to cut out and then go and start eating vegan junk food because it's not going to help you. But like I said in my last video, the most important thing to do is to eat whole foods, a whole food plant-based diet meaning whole foods that you can recognize straight away. That's a potato, that's a beetroot, that's a carrot, that's a celery. Things that you know straight away what they are. Learn how to cook, um, throw your herbs in there, um, your thyme, your rosemary, your coriander. It's got such a high nutrient dense um, bioavailability for you, your body, your healing. And as you start to learn some of these ingredients, how they work together, you enjoy your food so much more. Like the things that I've learned in the last couple of years have just been insane. I've had to kind of like reteach myself how to cook from scratch, not using like pre-packaged seasoning that has loads of sugars and artificial colors in it, like getting raw turmeric and raw cumin and raw coriander and throwing those together in a pot and smelling the aromas and kind of like knowing what works together. It's such an amazing experience and your skin will thank you for it, honestly. Um, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope it hasn't been too long, but um, as I said, if you're new to my channel, subscribe. If you want to get in contact with me, you can follow me on Instagram. I put a lot more content on Instagram and I'm probably more available on Instagram. If you want to DM me, um, by all means, go ahead and DM me. And even if I take a really long time, I will always get back to you. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next week.